If you couldn't already tell, it's autumn and I am thriving. Autumn is my season, I'm an October baby, my birthday is a day before Halloween, so maybe this, that explains this a little bit. So I thought I'd do a video of kind of autumn, autumnal book recommendations, things that are cosy, that are really good to read around this time, and then also things that are a little bit on the spooky side that are good to read in the run up to Halloween or during Halloween. And if you couldn't tell by the thumbnail where I'm like struggling to breathe under a pile of books. I have quite a lot to get through and then the thumbnail isn't even all the books that I've picked out so I'm just gonna get into it and rush through some of these. So I'm gonna start with some graphic novels. A really obvious one is Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rowell um, with the art by Faith Erin Hicks. This is just really sweet and comfy. It's set at a pumpkin patch and these two best friends have been working at this pumpkin patch for like three years I believe. They basically keep going back every autumn and it's about how their kind of friendship has grown over that time. The art is really gorgeous, it's really comfy and cosy. I remember being a little bit let down by the ending but if you're looking for something to get you into that cosy mindset this is definitely gonna help with that. Another graphic novel is Seconds by Brian Lee O'Malley and I'm not actually sure if this is set around autumn, probably more like winter judging by the back of the book but the colour palette is very autumnal, it's got a lot of warm colours in there and it's about this girl who's trying to set up a restaurant and the restaurant is called Seconds and it's her second chance, her second time at trying to succeed and I remember really loving this. I don't remember a lot of the specifics um, but I remember feeling really comfy and cosy and this is just very comforting and it's quite chunky as well so it'll keep you occupied for like a few cosy nights I think. And the last graphic novel I'm going to recommend is not necessarily one for autumn but um, autumn does always remind me of school starting or university starting. September is obviously the month where people would usually go back to school, go back to uni. Unfortunately that's not me this year. I'm now an adult, a graduate who has to go into the world. Um, but Giant Days follows these three girls who are just starting university. It's set in the UK. I really love it. It's not necessarily themed around autumn, but if autumn reminds you of school um, and you want like a comfort read that has all the kind of ups and downs of university in it, then this is definitely one for you and I'm always plugging this. If you go back through my channel, I've mentioned this in like probably over 10 videos. I think it's a brilliant series. Um, it never falters, it never fails to make me laugh or smile or cry or whatever the emotion is that day, <laughs> but um, yeah, I really recommend this. And in that vein, if autumn reminds you of school, I have The School for Good and Evil, which is a middle grade book that I recently hauled. I have not read it yet, so I could be completely wrong, but this does give me kind of nostalgic, spooky vibes. I did show the first illustration in this in my video that I did, but also just like the map at the front of these beautiful castles. I mean, if this isn't going to get you in the autumnal cosy mood, I don't really know what is. I'm very excited to read this. So sticking with the school theme, but more of like a spooky, you know, a little segue into kind of spooky Halloween time is Dark Academia, which is a genre that I have yelled about, but surprisingly I have not read the most famous book in that genre, which is probably The Secret History by Donna Tartt. Um, this has been on my radar for years and I always eye it up when I go into the bookshop. Um, the first book of Donna's Heart that I read was The Goldfinch and I remember thinking that she's an incredible writer but The Goldfinch is a very long book and part of the pacing um, didn't really work for me. Um, but I'm very excited to read this because again <laughs> this is shorter so maybe I won't have the, the problem with the pacing and also Dark Academia is right up my street and this is the perfect time to read this so I'm really excited to finally get to this. And again Dark Academia is Ninth House which I talked about in my trying to do my TBR in lockdown video. So Ninth House follows Alex Stern who is a girl who can see ghosts and she's had a very tough life, has been struggling with substance abuse and she is brought to Yale University and because she can see ghosts she is asked to kind of keep their secret societies under wraps. So there's a lot of paranormal stuff going on, there's a lot of kind of mystery stuff going on. I was a little bit conflicted with again kind of pacing. Um, I thought there was like less of a focus on the magic part and more of a focus on like something else. I don't want to spoil it. But I did enjoy it and I will be checking out the sequel so I do recommend this. So my next kind of category of recommendations is more kind of nostalgic. I recently did a childhood bookshelf tour um, where I went through all the books from my childhood and it was very nostalgic and very fun. And I think the autumn seems to be a good time for stuff like that. I mean you want to feel cozy, you want to feel comforted and you know reading narratives that feel kind of familiar um, I think is, is really nice this time of year. This might just be me, I might be just making this up, but whatever. So the first recommendation I've got is this gorgeous edition of The Wind in the Willows, which I recently picked up. I picked it up in the tape, but I think you can get it 
other places too. But it's got this beautiful kind of gold detailing and it's a gorgeous illustrated edition so I'll insert some of the illustrations. But I just, I grew up listening to this on audiobook. I think I got the audiobook free in the newspaper when I was a kid. So this is a, a story that I really, really love and I didn't actually own it in physical copy so I picked it up. I love the cloth bound cover, I'm so excited to read this. And technically it starts um, with spring cleaning, that's the opening of the story, Mole is doing his spring cleaning, but the story kind of segues into them going to the woods and it getting a bit scary, a bit spooky, a bit wintry, um, and I just think it's the perfect kind of like comforting, almost like cottage core. they all live in like really cute little like mole houses and like it's just very nice, it's very comforting and I really would recommend it for this time of year. A book I've also mentioned recently is The Girl Who's Open Navigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making. Um, again I don't think this is set around autumn time but just look at that cover, if that doesn't give you autumn vibes I don't know what planet you're on. And also the main character in this book is called September so it is a very good book I feel to read around this time. It's basically um, a kind of take on Alice in Wonderland about this little girl called September who gets whisked away to this magical world of fairyland and it's very fun and I really need to continue with this series because it's been a while since I read this. Again kind of nostalgic but kind of not really but <laughs> I went with Madeline Miller's novels which is The Song of Achilles and Circe which are obviously based around Greek myth so The Song of Achilles is based around the story of Achilles and Patroclus. what's his name? Patroclus. Patroclus. <laughs> it's hard to say, but I really enjoy this novel. It's set mostly around summer, I believe, but I just like that kind of familiar story. You know, we've all heard myths before, we've all heard of the Greek gods, and you know, there'll be names in the books that you recognise. Um, so the, I don't know, they'd make me feel comfortable. I think maybe because I, I grew up on a lot of Percy Jackson, so reading about Greek gods and Greek figures in mythology does comfort me. I don't know if that works for you. And I also would recommend Circe because she is a witch and she's one of the first ever, I think, recorded witches in literature. That might be wrong, but it has very witchy vibes. Circe is um, banished to an island by herself um, and she has this time on an island on her own just to kind of investigate and she, uh, you know, experiments with her magic and the the wildlife around her. That sounds strange, but I would really recommend this for autumn. It has a beautiful autumnal foiling cover. Um, so yeah, I think this is a really good book for this time of year. A book that I just read is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. Um, I just <laughs> bought this the other day and read it like within a day. It was incredible. I'll talk more about why I loved it in my wrap up, but for now um, I'll just say that it's about this girl called Nora who commits suicide. So it starts off quite sad, uh, obviously, um, but she then finds herself in the Midnight Library, which is a place between life and death. And in the Midnight Library, she gets the chance to live out the life that she could have lived um, like without her regrets. So there are lots of different kind of parallel lives that she could have lived had she made different decisions. And in this place, in Midnight Library, she gets to effectively try on these different lives. And the reason I thought this was nice for Autumn was because it's a little bit sad. It has that kind of obviously the death element, but also her getting to try out these different lives is kind of an element of, you know, rebirth and, you know, looking at yourself in a different way. Um, and also, yeah, it's slightly supernatural, you know, slightly, so obviously like not grounded in real life necessarily, but it is also really comforting. I'm kind of awed by the way that Matt Haig tackles really difficult topics like death and suicide, but does it in a way that feels comforting to read. Um, so I would really recommend this. I really enjoyed this. Another book I've got here, which I have no idea like what category to place it in, is just the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, which again, I haven't read yet. i um, talked about it quite recently, but... Yeah, I think this might be good to read around autumn time, so I'm looking forward to doing that. Now, if you don't know, I'm quite a big Agatha Christie stan. I've read a lot of her books, um, I've seen a lot of adaptations of her work, none that have particularly blown me away, but that's a different topic for a different day. So Queen Agatha Christie. <laughs> I adore her books, even though they follow a very similar formula, um, each of them are original and witty and surprising and yeah, very cosy. She does that thing, like, you know, she, that's what she's known for, like the cosy mystery genre. That was her thing. It was like what she coined. Um, and I love her books. If I were to pick out a few of hers to recommend, I would pick out Sleeping Murder, which is Miss Marple's last case. Really love this book. Murder on the Orient Express, classic of hers. Again, takes place on a train in the middle of winter, so it might be good for when the weather starts getting colder. 
Um, and then there were none, which might be good for like post quarantine. It's about these people that are isolated on an island and then they start going missing and then people start accusing each other like you're the murderer and now it's you. But you know, you know, like quarantine lockdown vibes, so that might be good for this time. And Appointment with Death, which takes place in like the desert. Where does this take place? Uh, towering red cliffs of Petra and I remember really really loving this one so it might be good for autumn. So obviously I don't have all of Agatha Christie's books because she's written so many um, and I can't buy any new ones or any ones that are new to me this autumn because I have this really stupid predicament where I started buying these little editions which are not the same size as paperback like normal paperback is like this size can you see the difference? I don't even know if I've done this right. Anyway, um, but these are a little bit smaller and for years they were just like this. So this is how they were published. And then for some reason, a couple of years ago, they just started releasing these with the same covers, but in normal size paperback, which obviously don't match. And if you see my Shadowhunters Palava video, you will know that that irks me. And a few years ago when I went to Georgia, the country, not the place in America, with my mum, because that's where she's from, they have this one English bookshop in Georgia that stocks the right size of Agatha Christie books. So I have to wait until I go back there before I can get more. So to fill the void of Agatha Christie this autumn, I got this book called Eight Detectives by Alex Pavesi, which I'd seen um, some reviews for on Goodreads, but basically the back is like Christie for the new age, or what did they say? Someone said, so clever, Agatha Christie would have taken her hat off to this one, bravo. So. I'm hoping this will fill the void. Um, I'm not entirely sure what it's about. Um, it says, all murder mysteries follow a simple set of rules. In the 1930s, Grant McAllister, a mathematics professor turned author, worked them out, hiding their secrets in a book of crime stories. Then Grant disappeared. Oh. 30 years later, ambitious editor Julia Hart arrives on a secluded island. Oh, brilliant. So we've got author, mystery, disappearance, a secluded island. I'm ready, I'm so ready, I'm gonna read this as soon as possible. And now for slightly more kind of thrillery books that are more, I guess, for like Halloween going into winter. A book that really stayed with me is I'll Be Gone in the Dark, which is not fiction, it's a non-fiction book. It's Michelle McNamara's journey to catching the Golden State Killer. So Michelle McNamara was a journalist and she had a true crime blog and she got really involved in this case, the Golden State Killer, and the reason it had remained unsolved for so many years is because the different police stations that were in different states don't speak to each other. So, so a police station in, say, California will just operate within California. They won't speak to the next one in the next state, but then this killer knew this and took advantage of this and would go and cross state lines and that's why he wasn't caught for so long because the stations didn't speak to each other and didn't see the similarities in their cases. And then Michelle McNamara did all the legwork, obviously not on her own, but she was an instrumental part in joining the dots of this case and she dedicated her life to it. She actually passed away um, before this was published, I believe. I think it was a medical um, issue that she had. But it's such a compelling book and it's also more ethical than a lot of true crime stuff that I have watched or I've seen. Obviously, you don't want to get entertainment from uh, someone's tragedy and I feel like this book does a really good job of trying to go about it respectfully like Michelle McNamara's search for this guy wasn't about wanting to know the grisly details or wanting to know what he's like or what he is this book isn't about him like the killer and the the rapist and the burglar all of the horrible things that he did it's about the victims and trying to protect women from him um, and I really really enjoyed it, it really stayed with me and it's really well written, really compelling. And then for more kind of straight up thriller type things is My Sister the Serial Killer which I'm waiting for like a dark day in October to just get through this because it's very small and I think I could get through this in a day and I'm very excited to read this. Then I picked up literally yesterday um, Death in Her Hands by Atessa Mosh. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, I'm very sorry. Um, but I love this cover, it's so creepy, so atmospheric. And it's about this woman who finds a dead woman in the forest by her house and she gets really obsessed with finding out who this woman is, why she was killed, what has happened. Um, and I've heard a lot of great things about it, I've heard a lot of great things about the writer in their other works, so I think this will be a really, really good pick for kind of like mid-October going into November when it's getting 
cold and bleak outside. I'm very excited to get to this. And in this book, The Hunting Party is set around New Year's, so I might wait until like December to read this one, but it's basically classic kind of setup. These friends um, convene at a cabin for New Year's and then obviously something horrible happens and they have no idea who the perpetrator is or what's happened and it's the classic kind of thriller setup. The cover, I was excited because it's got like a stag on it with antlers and if you know me, you will know. <laughs> I read a book a couple of years ago called Stags which had a very compelling premise that was so tailored to me. It was like Gossip Girl meets Agatha Christie and I was so hyped for it and it was one of the worst books I've ever read. I did a whole rant review on my channel. I've never done a rant review for any book in this channel's history apart from Stags. So any book that sort of promises me what Stags couldn't deliver is why I will buy it. Like, if you think you can give me the energy that I wanted from Stags, I will give it a shot because that hole has not been filled. I'm still angry about that. I'm still upset. I want the book that Stag could have been. So maybe this is it, maybe not, but we'll see. I'll let you know. So no excuses. No, I don't know what to read that's gonna get me in the autumn vibe. I have you covered. Oh, hopefully, hopefully there'll be something in these recommendations that will um, scream out to you. Let me know in the comments if any one of these speak to you and you're gonna um, maybe track it down and give it a read, that would make me very happy. Although, if reading's not your thing, which, you know, fair enough, but I'm not sure why you're watching this, but if reading's not your thing, I also recommend two very autumnal movies, which is Monster House, classic, also I don't know if Coraline counts as autumnal, but it just makes me feel cosy and it's spooky and it's just atmospheric as heck. So I recommend those two beautiful stop motion animations if you want something autumn but you don't want to read. So yeah, I hope you enjoy this video and I will see you soon with another one.